lesson planning is so stressful. Like, oh my god. Okay, so I've taken my original lesson plan, which is admittedly like amazing, right? I mean, like this thing covers 17 different common core state standards. It's like the bomb. And now I have to try to differentiate this into like really, really super laser focused um, orientations. And so I think what I'm going to end up having to do is uh, turn my super beautiful, awesome dynamic lesson plan and bastardize it into two opposing factions. I'm going to have it turn into a social efficiency thing where it's just basically mimic this, do as I say, blah, 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 manufacture assembly line. And then have the other one be like social meliorism. You know, like take it and make it political and make it like change society and, you know, empower the students to empower each other. So here's the original lesson plan that we did for, um, that I did for Rick's class uh, last semester and it's you know a fairly dynamic lesson it goes over I mean again like all of these common core state standards or 17 of them that I um, focused on for this particular lesson lots of detailed you know analysis of how everything's gonna go um, but you know sometimes it's a little bit too complex and that's sad I mean as teachers we really should just be okay with mediocrity right <laughs> So for this part of the assignment, uh, students will have to choose words to replace in the original, but maintain the flow, um, and but still create a different story. Um, and the sufficient lesson also takes into account the value of the original and the value of being able to mimic style and voice while also creating a very different narrative. Um, so here we have the original Romeo and Juliet, and then we are switching that over to Vladimir and Donaldo. Uh, what you can see here is that it does change the dynamic, but all we are doing is replacing certain words. So here, instead of the fearful passage of their death marked love, I put tweet marked love because Donald Trump likes to tweet. And then I also changed the setting to planet Earth rather than because this is a world stage rather than just the setting for um, Romeo and Juliet. However, as a whole, it does maintain the original flow of Romeo and Juliet because all we did was replace words with the exact same syllabic count. Uh, so instead of, you know, it's like countries and the households, um, these have the same syllables in them. Also, instead of take their lives, I put make their life. Because, you know. They, they're not dying in, in the new version, they are um, becoming united in, their, in the new version. And then for this lesson, uh, students will need to choose two world leaders who are either affectionate towards or admired by each other despite coming from countries that are not allies on the world stage. Hence, we're going to go ahead and stick with Trump and Putin. Um, students will have uh, the option to create it in a uh, Shakespearean language or update it to fit the narrative dialogue of their chosen leaders. Satire is also welcome to be expressed in this lesson. So for this, instead of actually trying to create something completely new, all I did was use tweets from Donald Trump's actual Twitter feed. Um, and then you'll see that, you know, it starts off uh, with, uh, despite the negative press, Kofefe. And then um, for uh, Vladimir Putin's dialogue, I uh, decided to go ahead and basically, um, instead of doing something that he would actually say, be like the idealized version of what um, Donaldo would want uh, Vladimir to say in this situation. So I think the biggest takeaway from this is to not overthink your lesson plans because if you make them too amazing, you're going to feel really, really bad when you can't actually do everything that you want to do. So instead, make them meh, and everything will be okay. I'm sorry, I feel so dirty for saying that. Make it amazing. Don't listen to me. <laughs>